China is busy creating a solution to the U.S. Air Force's Next Generation Air Dominance Program, or NGAD, according to Jen Mark D. Kelly, the Chief of Air Combat Command, ACC, ACC. Jen Kelly anticipates that the highly clandestine Chinese operations will generate the same sort of air combat system of systems that the Air Force is seeking, including a sixth-generation manned fighter jet. As we have covered in the past, the NGAD program is much more than a sixth-gen manned fighter. It's also expected to incorporate collaborative drones to work with human aircraft, plus new weaponry, sensors, and communications infrastructure. The U.S. Air Force wants NGAD to be fielded as genuine capability by 2030 and the Chinese are maintaining pace, Kelly said. Kelly recently addressed the war zone and other members of the media at the Air and Space Forces Association's Air, Space and Cyber Conference, sharing his insights on future Chinese air combat projects. One of the significant conclusions from this is Kelly's assessment that China looks at sixth-generation Air Force, including future manned fighter aircraft greatly the way we see it, an exponential decrease in signature, exponential acceleration of processing capacity and sensing. Another crucial component is the capacity to iterate advancements enabled by open mission systems. That iterative method should allow China to reprogram at the pace of relevance, Kelly says. Moreover, the ACC chairman points to China's existing expertise in the repeated construction of interconnected families of fighter planes, particularly its reworkings of the Soviet-designed flanker series. They started with Su-27, transform into Su-30, then their own J-16 and eventually the Su-35, Kelly stated. China became the first export customer for the basic Su-27 in 1992, and by the time it bought the multirole Su-30 MKK from Russia in 2000, it had produced Su-27s under license, as the J-11 and J-11A, before it began developing the homegrown J-11B with multirole capabilities, plus Chinese engines and avionics. This, in turn, led to the two-seat J-16 that's effectively a Chinese counterpart of the sophisticated Su-30 MKK. In the interim, the carrier-based Su-33 underwent the same treatment, emerging as the multirole J-15. Today, the development of ever more powerful variants of the J-15 and J-16 continues, including expansion into the electronic warfare sector. Interestingly, Kelly seems to imply a possible rationale for China's surprising acquisition of a very modest batch of 24 Su-35s, perhaps Russia's most sophisticated contemporary flanker type. Noting that the Su-35 has 5th gen avionics and 5th gen speed, despite its otherwise 4th generation status, Kelly said that its acquisition will make it a little easier when they go off the rung to their next fighter, that is to say, the transition from the 5th to the 6th generation. Since Beijing bought the Su-35, there's been much speculation as to why it might have placed the order. Some have suggested China wanted a closer look at the Su-35's thrust vectoring engines, as well as gain insight into one of Russia's frontline assets, its weapons, and electronic warfare systems. The Su-35 has been used in dissimilar air combat training, but also for operational long-range escort missions over the South China Sea. As such, a small buy of Su-35s makes a lot of sense for China both in terms of comparing the latest Russian avionics and weapons with its own technologies, but also for developing highly agile aircraft and related tactics.